Hi everyone, yeah. welcome to another episode of Raising the Bar. And today I'm really chuffed to has, have this gentleman on, Alabar. How you doing, mate? Good to see you, bro. Full name Alabar Jones. Sorry, I forgot your surname there. But um, yeah, good morning to you where you are. I know it's early, but um, difficult to uh, synchronize time zones, isn't it? God bless the 24 hour clock. Doesn't make life easy for everyone. <laughs> yeah, you don't like the mi- is it you don't like the military times? Is that you? No, no, it wasn't me. But um, I'm like ah. Uh, just it's just one of the um one of the sacrifices you have to make to have international friends everywhere you know to yeah, be in contact with everybody all over the world yeah we shouldn't moan really i mean we're lucky to have the tech to be able to do this so <laughs> totally, totally. but you know that. it still means getting up at crazy o'clock in the morning which i just was never a fan of yeah true true so anyway thank you for that appreciate that um you know i stumbled upon your channel i think it's about a week ago a couple of weeks ago and I don't think I've, I think I've watched nearly every single one of your videos. <laughs> That's quite a compliment. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's just really, really entertaining, really engaging, you know, like really kind of, I don't know, there's something about it. Even if, even if you're of the mind where you don't believe it, there's something really entertaining and gripping about it. I can't explain it. You just have to have to see it to believe it. <laughs> and um, I know that for a lot of people, it might sound a bit out there. Um, I think you've almost got oh, a little bit of an understanding with this, haven't you? A little bit to lead into it, but basically, what I've, this is... I've been told, I've been told that I that I'm speaking to a fairly spiritually um, developed group, but you know, like, I don't know how we're, how to dumb, how to make it easy <laughs> yeah. for people to understand what uh, you know what an astral projection gorilla force looks like. I don't know how to explain it. Like, yeah, like, I know. Like, I think I think if, if just the term astral traveling has put people off, don't bother watching it. You know, like just yeah, yeah. Uh, only watch this if you've got some kind of interest, at least in sort of transdimensional realities, interdimensional realities, that kind of stuff. You know, or All if you're of kind of of the stuff. spiritual, you know, ilk where you think there's a little bit more to just the physical reality i think maybe we've got a chance of you <laughs> but yeah it's about astral traveling today and uh alibi yeah i've seen your videos and you know your well you would you like to just quickly in a, in a tweet sized statement say what you do because I, I couldn't say it better than you could i never i never got one of those but i'll try mm. um so i i manage teams of astral projectors and we fly and we've been watching all of the craziness that's going on in the world lately and so we're out there trying to fix that on the astral planes you may have heard the phrase as above so yeah. below we're trying to get to it while it's still at the above stage and um and and i think we've skipped a lot of uh, and, and we've avoided a lot of the uglier outcomes that could have happened to you on earth Okay, let's start with that. We we kind of said before we hit record, didn't we, that um, we're going to try and do something a little bit unique and a bit novel here. We're going to start right, off yeah. with more of a quick fire thing because I've actually put together, I don't, I've never put so many questions together for a guest and I just think it'd be better just to have a small amount of a laugh. Then... I don't know if I'm lucky or not. Lucky me. No, maybe, uh, yeah, you'll have to take, maybe, maybe take it on the chin, this one. Um, but okay, let's sort of start off with the uh, law of correspondence, which is what you're alluding to there, as above, so below. Yep. Your um, uh, theory is that what happens in the astral world also happens in the physical, but it happens there first, right? And then it comes into the physical world. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is a this goes back to ancient Egypt with Hermes and uh, Hermes Trismegistus, and uh, his other name was Thoth when he was e in Egypt. But mm. Hermetic laws say the second one is as above, so below. So while the universe is figuring out and calculating all of the things that happen here, yeah. we get to see it. When you astral project, you get to see those calculations before they become physical fact. So what sort of things are going on there? Everything. Um, Plato described it, I don't know like if you guys have heard this, about you remember his thing where he has the light, the shadow, the cave? Yeah, the cave, the Plato's light, cave. Right? Yeah. And yeah. we're only seeing like a simulacrum of what's really going on. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about the astral plane where this gets figured out before we see the um, the shadow of real events. Okay, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about that in a minute. W would you also call that the fourth dimension? What you're referring to? The astral. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, is it yeah. true that in the fourth dimension, there's no good there? They're all negative demonic entities. That's a lie. That's an absolute lie. Yeah. Um, look, there is the breadth of hu human uh, emotion. Mm. If you go to different neighborhoods, you can go to neighborhoods of depression and misery or anger or joy and playfulness and delight and connection. You know, like it's just, what do you want to go see? Right. Okay, so there's good and there's bad in there because I've spoken to people and they say even the good are like pretending to, even the bad are pretending to be good. No, sorry, did I get that? Yeah, that, that, that happens. <laughs> that happens. Yeah. Some of the good guys are yeah. imposters, right? and but there are, there are ways around. There are ways around that. Um, there is something in Hindu philosophy that says the astral planes are distinctly evil. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure we're talking about the same place when we use the word astral. It's just we don't have any better words in English to describe what I'm doing. Yeah, the ethereal, the, uh, I don't even know if there's another word, but yeah. No, no, exactly, exactly. There just isn't the vocab. So when, when yeah. you listen to Hindus, they're referring to, when you say astral travel to Hindus, they go, oh my God, you never do that. Um, because Hindu philosophy says it's all bad, which yeah. just isn't true. Okay, so what are you doing when you're astral traveling? Like, what, what does that look like? And how do you do it? And how do you make sure that you know you're doing it and not just having a projection of your own um, mindscape, if you know what I mean? Well, look, and I want to give everybody uh, uh, a, an, an example, a test that they can do themselves. I want them to sit down, close their eyes and watch themselves do 50 push-ups. Just mentally do 50 push-ups. I just and did. I just did fifty press ups. <laughs> an oh wow! Wow! <laughs> See, it's right. The correspondence yeah. is right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Go mentally do fifty push ups and see if your arms hurt. All right. Not now. Do it later. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but look, yeah. um, one of the things. Very early on, everybody asked me, how do you know you're not just mentally playing with yourself? And now that I, well, because I can feel the changes that I make in myself and the changes I make in myself are emotional. Like, uh, and so if I want to feel this on a regular basis, then I'll feel this. If I want to feel that. And so, you know, I used it to, dep to treat my depression and things like that which was wonderful, had great results. Um, but it is reprogramming your emotions is probably the most usual application for actual projection. Okay, because I would have thought if you're working on yourself, then that's a local experience, not a non-local experience, no? Well, look, um, and get used to working on yourself and build up your skills and your connection and your level of visual and uh, your level of detection. Because if you, if, you, if you just wander around the astral planes, it is kind of like doing it with a, um, with a blindfold and a white stick. Like you're not, mm. like you don't know what you're gonna hit, bump into, and you don't know what it's gonna do to you until you've spent the time um, getting used to the environment. So are you saying that the astral world is within you? You're not going outwards when you're astral traveling. You're kind of going inwards, right? Yeah. Well, you know, all these different philosophies say that, you know, the Holy Spirit is within you and is everywhere else at the same time. And, so, and it's the same thing they call a Tao, that, that same phrase applies. Mm. And in science, they have a, world, a, a concept called universal magnetism, where every, every atom is simultaneously attracted to every other atom, mm. which is a giant connection of this, this ethereal, non-physical connection between all things. like. Um, you know, the human genome said that 96% of our DNA is junk. Mm -hmm. And my uh, assertion is that 96% of our DNA is to build our non-physical bodies, our astral bodies. Right. Okay. Yeah. But where is that? Like conceptually, where, where are you going? Like, where is this though? Yes. Do you know? uh, yes. <laughs> I, um, and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, if, Well, look, two two of the two of the most famous non-physical body systems. You know, like we have a circulation system and a nervous system and a skeletal system, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. 
Um, one is the chakra system, which is really big when Hinduism came to the West. And the other one is the meridian system, which is the backbone of Chinese med and kinesiology. Yeah. So, you know, like we do use them for different things, but like nobody, you know, like because they're non-physical, because they exist outside the spectrum of light that our eyes can use, mm. then we can't point to it. Mm. But it simultaneously holds the same space, if that helps. Yeah, it's like a hologram. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, it, no, it makes sense to me because it's the as above, so below again. It's um, it's fractal. When you affect the macrocosm, you're affect affecting the microcosm and, and vice versa. I, I understand yeah, exactly. that conceptually, you know, but I guess some people might um, not be kind of on that level of awareness. Not that, not to mm -hmm. sound that I know my what I'm talking about, but just I know the kind of the the general theories on this, you know. It's, um, a, it's a lot. To, it's a lot to get used to because our Western culture doesn't have any reference points for what we're talking about but i think actually when you just mentioned there about the um the meridian points i think you mentioned did you um and you know you have acupuncture that's working in a more holistic way and it's saying that you know you can work on one area of the body and it affects another part of the body so it's not too detached from certain uh mechanisms methodologies as well but um obviously it well, goes look, the, the first time the first time i ever got acupuncture he put a uh he put, he put pins in my fingers and pins in my feet and my back got my back straightened and i go yeah that's magic yeah that's, mm. that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah no, no 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 explanation for that mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true true um all right i've got some more questions okay um you've answered that how do you know you're astral traveling or, or it's a projection of the mind so how would you know that when you're actually astral traveling it's not let's say like a dream where it's, you see dream characters and you're even talking to your friends and family in the dream, but um, it's actually just a projection of your mind. But when you're astral traveling no. and you're, you're, it's not. No, 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 no. Like, um, well, look, I had a, I had a housemate at one point who was a prolific dreamer. Like she'd close her eyes and like have vivid dreams for six hours straight. Yeah. And so I set my alarm and decided to go and visit her in her dreams. And I was there, she was there. It's not a, it's not a figure of, it's not a solipsis thing where you're the only thing that, that's real and everything else around you is uh, just a figment of your imagination. By going and visiting her in her dreams, and then, like I said, and then we, we found a herd of unicorns and we rode around on rainbows on a herd of unicorns, right? And she added her parts to the story. And then that happened, and that happened. I go, yes, we were both in the same place at the same time. Mm. But you know, there's no address for that place. Yeah, but that's that. I mean, most dreams aren't like that. Most dreams are a projection of your own mind. Yeah, well, you know, like that's what happened when we met. Like we decided to meet up. I, I decided to meet up with her, and um, and I knew that she'd be able to be, because she's such a prolific dreamer. She would remember. Yeah, and we could retell the same story. You know what? When I because I'm I'm a big lucid dreamer. I've been doing it all my life, and um, oh, cool. one of the things that I do to test the um, validity of the dream you know and if i'm speaking to someone so I'll, let's say i'll meet you in a dream right um the yep. way to test to see if it's really you or if it's a projection of my own mind is i'll ask you to talk and as you're talking i'll count really out loud one two three four five and so i know my brain can't um separate those two things at the same time it can either count to ten. yeah so <laughs> what will happen is i'll be talking to you and then you'll say no no john i'm real like i'm here buddy you know and so i'll say okay keep talking and i'll count to 10 and then as i'm counting to 10 as you're talking you'll start saying the numbers with me because it's like you can't stop yourself because it's my mental projection if you know what i mean so that's my that's kind of like yeah. my test and i've tried on every single dream character and they all fail that test so i know that it's a projection of my mind basically um but yeah so i'm just uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, well, because and my suggestion to you is to endeavor to meet up to fly, like to actually choose someone you know well and go and visit them. I'll try it with you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll try it with you. Is there is there a question? You ask me a question and I'll I'll find it out if you want. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that. We'll talk it off too. off camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Yeah. No, that's interesting because I'm really big into like lucid dreaming and I. You know, I do. I actually, I was going to say that I spend a lot of time, and this is what kind of connected to me to you and resonate, made me resonate with you. I'm like constantly killing vampires in my dreams and um, and ghouls and stuff like that. Yeah, right. and I've been oh, doing yeah. that a few years, and I've even been like, I get in a dream and I, and I'll literally get on my soapbox and go, "Hey guys, listen, 
there's vampires everywhere. Like, just be careful. And they're from a different world. And I've... <laughs> then, then you probably actually are mm. in a negative dimension group. You know how we're talking about different neighborhoods? Yeah. I would suggest to you that you are in a bad neighborhood when you're actually, like part <laughs> of your astral body. No, I'm not joking at all. Part of your astral body is in a bad neighborhood. Yeah. And so when you immediately jump into the astral plane, who do you bump into? But let's just say gangsters, you know, like something yeah. like that. But I kick ass, man. I'm like, I'm an absolute legend in that zone, you know. Because, um... that, well, because they are weaker <laughs> than us. Yeah. Fundamentally, yeah. those guys are weaker than we are. Right. But because we don't know they're there, because we, because humanity has not uh, taken on this technology, we haven't really decided that this is something we want to do, then, then these guys are allowed to run rampant because we don't know how to respond to them. Just in the same way that in the Middle Ages, we didn't understand about germs and about, uh, we didn't have microscopes, so we never saw germs. Mm. And so they did whatever they wanted to humanity. And like, we all got very much more sick, much more often. But now, it, and this is exactly the same situation. Mm. So when you're dreaming, are you definitely astral traveling then every dream? Yeah, yeah. To some extent, to some level of depth, you know, um, yeah. Well, look, your mind is an incredibly powerful object and we've just been told that we don't know how to use it. We've never been taught how to use it properly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely true there, yeah. Um, okay, back to the more the quick part. Okay, so um, do all your astral travellers, and you say there's about 48 of you, I think I watched on your last video, but that's when you undertake like a big mission. Um, do they all mm -hmm. see the same thing simultaneously? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we we'll definitely do. Look, uh, that 48 was for one occasion, for yeah. one mission, right? And most of us, most of we don't have that many people who are full time professional experienced, you know, like in order to join my groups, uh, mm. you know, you've got to have done 10,000 hours of astral projection yourself. Mm. I think I've done 20 or 25,000. Mm. Um, Okay. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So like, w you know, there's no room for passengers. Like we get into combat situations and that can be dangerous. You know, we are risking our sanity. But so if you don't know what you're doing, like it's not a good idea to come fly with us. So first, firstly, do they all see the same thing? Yeah, they do. Yes, absolutely. Do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And absolutely. so when you said they're like, what can happen? It's dangerous for them. Is it a little bit like Neo and it, like, you know, in the matrix where if you get sh killed in the matrix, you get killed in real life then? Uh, no, 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 but I wouldn't know. No. But your sanity and sometimes your physical health is at risk. Right. Okay. Because that's so, the correspondence there. They, they attack you in, in the astral and it can affect some kind of part of your physical body. Well, well, look, the bad guys, and every religion talks about them, be the uh, jinn if you're a Muslim, or yeah. genies, or uh, Ouija, or Ouija, which is um, mm. the Hebrew word from which we would get the word Ouija board. Mm. Um, demons, or if you're Hindu, they're Budpret, or if you're Chinese, they're called Morgui. They're all describing, they all independently came up with a conclusion that there are invisible monsters that mess with your mind. And... Um, and all mental health issues are caused by these beings, all of them. All of them? All of them. That's what mental health is. You've, you're being interfered with by one of these beings. You mm. see, like, the human body is actually at healthier and happier, and we live longer when we're in a good mood. Mm. All of our systems are designed for us to be in a good mood and to connect and love and care for one another. If we get diverted from that path, there's a very decent chance that uh, that one of these non-physical bad guys is involved. How do you how do you differentiate between um, okay, so you're feeling down, and you would say that's some kind of possession, some kind of demonic entity, right? But what if it's just the fact that you haven't done any exercise for a while, and then you go out and have a run, you feel great, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you you can get around them with physical. Um, with uh, physical hormone production and exercise is wonderful at that. Mm. 
wonderful. Like, uh, you know, you feel one, you know, like after 30 minutes of um, 30 minutes of exercise, your body just starts to flood with endorphins. And so yeah. it's just so worth it. Yeah. And it's so worth it. You know? yeah. um, so yeah. you're saying that, that, that it's got nothing to do with the physical health. It's just that that knocks away the, the entity. Well, look, it, they've been around for so long and they've had such a good run. And when you talk to them, they say that we've never had it better. The demons say we have never had it better than we have it now. Mm. And it's um, it's because they've had, uh, you know, 100 years of uninterrupted action. And so, you know, skip, uh, and, and the really extreme mm. version of mental health is schizophrenia, mm. where people are hearing voices, and that's really serious. But that's where the infection level goes up right up high. Mm. Um, hang on. But those voice, I want somebody to give me a better candidate for those voices than demon kind. I want somebody to suggest to me what else it might be. Well, I mean, I'll give you an example. I mean, I was feeling, this was a couple of years ago, I, I was feeling really depressed. Yep. Um, and, yep. and that was because I, I, um, I wasn't working at the time, you know, and I wasn't doing anything with my day. Immediately I mm -hmm. started the podcast and I was doing stuff, you know, just by just mm -hmm. by having a bit of utility about my day. Like I didn't feel depressed anymore. I wouldn't say that I was a movement of an entity. I just think that if we're not doing anything with our lives, if we're not expressing, we depress. You know, it's like um, you know, we're just I, I see I see where you I see where you I see what you're saying. Um but I would suggest to you that you're emotional neutral when there's nothing yeah. going on as happening. I, your emotional neutral is a bit sad, which isn't, which doesn't make sense to me. Like, there's not no, nothing to be sad about. It. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know, you look. Come for a session, and uh, and I'll show it to you. I'll yeah. show you what. Yeah, what yeah. I'm about. No, good yeah. stuff, man. <laughs> good stuff. Right, I'm going to delete that <laughs> that question. Um, all right, how do you know, <laughs> how do you know when someone has entities? Do I have one? Uh, I can see them, and look, the symptom list. There, are, there are four kinds that I most regularly um, and the first one is thinking too much if you think too much that's one type mm. if you have mood swings that's another type mm. if you have impulse control that's another type and if you and uh oh so, sorry the fourth one's just fallen out of my head um and addictions. If you are compulsive in any way, then that's a sign of another group. But you know, like mm. so in my research, I found eleven different ways that they penetrate the human body. Right. But those what are key. Right. Okay. Interesting. And do you can you actually see them on people? Because I, I I saw yeah. one of the videos. You said you see them. You're on the on a on a tube. You know, on the train, and you see them. You zap yeah. you zap them off people. Yeah, totally, totally. I actually, I spent a bit of time at the dan on the dance party scene doing the same thing. I just sit on the hillside and everybody rocking passes and shoot all the demons off. Them. So you can actually see yeah. them on the people, or do you kind of close your eyes and yeah. you see it with your mind's eye, or how's it work? Uh, first, I saw them with my mind's eye. Like the first time, I would I would sit on the I'd sit down and I'd scan people very mm. slowly and very carefully, and then I would see them. Mm. My eyes closed, I would scan them, and then um. And then as I got good at that, I started to be able to do it just with my third eye and these things mm. were disconnected. And then integrating the two of them, I could, I could do it while I was walking around. But, you know, and it takes about as much focus nowadays as it does to read. If I want to stop and read something, mm. then that's how much focus it takes for me to, to identify them on people. And so I'm guessing your trained astral travellers could all do the same thing then. They kind of see, and they would see the same entities well, look, and the same people. None of that, yeah, we do see the same entities, but none of our trainings are the same. Right. Uh, none of us have had the same training. It's all ad hoc and put slapped together. and Because like, yeah. there's no university of astral projection. There is no, there's no single course that you can do. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. Even, yeah, yeah, like it's, it's, it's a, yeah, you know, like I did meet a guy who was a Christian. He he learned how to astral project through Christianity. And I go, I have no idea how you learned to get how you got this far with it. And he goes, I feel the same way. I don't know how you did it. I don't know how you got there. <laughs> yeah, because don't they say that in Christianity, doing this kind of work is like of the devil, don't they? Or oh, uh, what the fuck isn't of the devil in yeah. Christianity? <laughs> it's either of the book or it's of the devil. You know, like 
Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and what's funny is like only the Sith see things in absolutes. Only, you know, you've got to go to a dark place to see things as so black and white of the Bible or yeah. of the devil in between. Like it's, it's annoying. Yeah, because I, I was I did a series of interviews with a detective. He's a you know um, big Christian, and he was saying any kind of channeling or astral traveling is just immediately going in you know demon worship and all this sort of stuff. So yeah, just wanted to. Well, it, it actually goes back to the Middle Ages when they um, like the devil, the heart, the goat, and the um, and the goat bottom half, human top half. That's actually pan. That's like a that's a druidic deity that um, was a <clears throat> of amongst any other things. He was a deity of partying, and you know, like being part of the forest and lusting. Right. Excuse me. <clears throat> but because like and and because they had two schools of magic in Europe at the time, druidism and um, and Christianity. Christianity was just ensuring its monopoly and exterminating the competition. And so it demonized everything. Mm. It either co-opted or demonized everything that the um, that the Druids were doing. So Christmas will have that. Like we'll have that, uh, sorry, that winter solstice, we'll have that. We'll call it Christmas now. We're not going to have Jesus' birthday on the 1st of April anymore or April Fool's Day. Mm. If you think, if you still think it's uh, it's Christmas on the first of April, then you're a fool, or the beginning of spring, then you're a fool. Um, and it, but you know all of the other magical practices that they do, you know, drawing a circle on the ground and um, mm. and astral projecting and burning burning incense and dancing around the forest and standing stones, all of that stuff's of the devil. Because it's, yeah. if it's not ours, it's evil. And so we are the we are the unipolar uh, version of magic in Europe. We are the we are the monopoly of magic in Europe, and everything yeah. else is evil, which yeah. is just a bit pathetic, really. Yeah, it's a little bit yeah. insecure, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I know, but it's they're they're, they're big onto it, aren't they? Like you know what you know, Jesus and only Jesus is the way, kind of thing. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, but look, I reinvented exorcism. Right? Like uh, mm. there was nobody to learn it from. I just learned it by putting on my boxing gloves and going up and meeting these guys. And you watch that movie, The Exorcist, and mm. how do they defeat that demon? The lead priest says, okay, demon, jump into me, and then he jumps out the window and kills himself. That's fucking amateur. Sorry, that's, sorry, edit this oh, that's yeah. amateur. That is amateur hour. That is pathetic. Mm. Like, you know, that's not a sustainable way to perform exorcism. And what and what that priest probably doesn't realise is that when he reincarnates, he'll have that same demon with him then. Mm. Uh, he didn't solve any problems. Right. Yeah. So, because... you know, that, my point is that Christians don't know what they're doing when it comes to exorcism. They really don't. So what? Because you you're an exorcist, right? What is the process, and what actually happens, and what's a, a successful way of doing it then? Um, it took me took me ten or fifteen years to figure it out. Like it's not something I can explain in a, in a, in five sentences. Mm. Um, but you know, it is a serious situation. If you're in trouble, come see a professional. We have a team of people devoted for serious mental health issues, be they addiction or, um, or high level mental health or even low mental level, le mm. men low level mental health issues. Like, uh, we can solve them pretty quickly. Uh, there is a video on my YouTube channel, you, mm -hmm. Alibar Jones. It's called Exorcism Before, During, and After, and you can see the process. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's no quick way of explaining it then? <laughs> no. No. No, no. no. They dig in pretty deep and, um, you know, it's, you've got to fight them. And so if you're not used to and – and the same rules of, of combat do not apply for Earth, for the terrestrial world as they do for um, – for the astral world so you know i had to develop a whole different fighting style a whole different way of doing things there so you have to properly fight them it's going to war then when when you're in that process. oh yeah i i kill them then of no good to anybody anywhere yeah. under any circumstance so you know mm. they're never helping anybody like so they that and you know high level wizards will tell you you know extermination is the correct answer if you're listening to people who tell you you have to love them you have to heal mm. them back to hell 
So if you have to, then what they're telling you is they have no idea what they're doing. They've got no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, because that was one of my comments on your video. I was like, uh, have you seen Golden Child where the little kid's in the cage and the, the one of those the big guys, you know, the bad guys comes over and he just touches him with a finger on the hand and he, he turns into a good guy. And then he then goes on to help the Golden Child and kill yeah, some yeah, of the yeah, bad guys. Right. So I was wondering, is it not possible to do that kind of uh, magic? Well, uh, you know, mind control is a real thing. Right. So, you know, and it sounds like the golden child was in a bit of a fix and he needed to do some mind control mm. without being funny. <laughs> like get into that guy's head and, and get into work for me. Mm. And and there are people who are experts at it, incredibly dangerous people. Dangerous people. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So you couldn't do this in the astral world then. It wouldn't be the right thing to do. Oh, I didn't. I I chose to go and fight evil instead of become evil. Like that's. But you like can't convert them, though. Is what I'm saying. You can't shine them with love in that in that um, realm. No, not really. Okay. People who choose to do it, yeah. People who choose to uh, mm. dark wizards specifically, um, you know, there's no hope for them. They've they're, they're, all of the options have been laid out for them, and this and they keep choosing the the wrong the wrong way to do things. So. I don't have any patience for them. Okay, fair enough. And how do you kill these ghouls or what would we call them? Just entities like what? Yeah, yeah look, um, yeah, well, I have techniques to do it, but uh, you know, it's technical, and I wouldn't be able to describe it adequately here. Right. Okay, but it's like with your intention, though, isn't it? You know, because it's obviously. Oh, uh, there's a process. Okay. Like, uh, in, in my classes, like uh, the the simplest ones to deal with, the ones that make you think too much, mm. um, like it's still a six part process to make them dead and to hurt, to remove, to revive that person to how they should be. So, oh, you you're know, talking about the exorcism, to... are you? You're you're referring yeah. to the exorcism. No, I mean just like you yeah. know when you go into the astral world, or okay, yeah, or the exorcism. Um, let, well, let's just start off with the the astral realm you know the, the 4d where the entities yeah, are. like i said like i said it took me 15 years to figure right. this out okay come right. and come and do my course if you want to be, if you want to learn it okay um all right i've still got questions <laughs> you might have to sort of try and answer i know we like the course is the comprehensive way but if you can try and you know get you give me something on these um so are there good astral are there black magic astral travelers that are combating what you're doing yeah yeah, yeah. they're professional they're paid by the elites like uh you yeah. know the you know everybody knows who alistair crowley was or not everybody knows the name alistair crowley they don't understand that he was famous because he was the chief dark priest for the illuminati and now that that hat or well, that position is worn by a, a lady named Marina Abramovich, yeah, who calls herself an artist, which means you can do all sorts of weird stuff, mm. and it's called art. But um, you know, you should check her out. She is a yeah, she's living, walking disaster area. Yeah, she's evil to the core. She has like cannibal parties where you eat and make humans and shit. Yeah, so she's and, going. And that's, with... and that's what you hear about. Yeah, but you know, like for her style of magic, human sacrifice is the feedstock, and so I would suggest that she's sacrificing humans several mm. a week minimum, doing rituals and stuff. Yeah, because I've spoken to quite a lot of survivors now, and they've come from like satanic ritual families, right? And they, they explain yeah. how they witness children being kidnapped and then put on like an altar. And then there's like a ritual done. Sometimes they're wearing the rope, like the family wearing the robes and stuff. It's a bit like eyes wide shut. And then the the, the, chil the, the children are killed. So they're slaughtered. But what's, what are they, what's the, the, what's the, me what's the magical mechanism that they're doing? Yeah. And what's the purpose of uh, it? Like transdimensionally, like what's the, what's the story? All there? Right. Okay. So sacrifice. Okay, so when something dies, then the 3D body dies, but the 4D body starts to break up. 
and that can be eaten as fuel. That can be chewed up as fuel. And so, you know, in the Bible, they talked about sacrificing the fatted calf for the to bless the harvest or the wedding or the new endeavor mm. or the uh, whatever the hell they're doing, right? Um, and what, in magical terms, what's happening here? So they'll have uh, a spirit of some kind on the other side, on the other side of the veil, and what they're doing is they're paying that spirit in the bot, the the astral body that breaks up. They're they're paying them that. This is the payment. Now I want you to go and perform these tasks for me. So as above, so below. I want you to perform these tasks for me so that this becomes the reality. Such as what kind of tasks? Um, you know, well, I, I get the business deal. Um, that guy disappears. This problem gets solved. I get this bit of luck. Whatever, you know, like I get into this relationship. I su seduce this person. Whatever it might be oh, that right. you want. Whatever it might be that you want. Now, sacrifice you. Pay the spirit a hundred bucks for something that costs about fifty. Right. So the task, and if you did these tasks yourself, if you got on the astral plane to perform these tasks yourself, then um, it would be a lot cheaper in terms of raw astral fuel or raw astral energy. But it's a flawed system. Right. It's a flawed system that it depends because nobody who's nice accepts death as payment. Right, none of the none of the good spirits, none of the friendly deities accept that energy. Mm. They don't want it. So if you're in that kind of magic, you're connecting with demons. And demons mm. never treat you well. <laughs> you know, like the whole thing about debts and owing your soul and all that sort of stuff. None of the nice guys talk about that. <laughs> But the day that you do a spell of that kind with a demon is the day that it sets its so it connects with you forever, <laughs> and it sets its sights on capturing your soul from that single day, from the very first day. And what does that actually mean? Like, what does that mean in terms of like it's it's got your soul, you know, from for the rest of your life? Does that mean oh, that for, for, for all eternity? Okay, and yeah. so our astral projection teams quite often will um, will find a problem that we want to solve, and will mm. and it's and it's created it's created as a, as a mimic situation in the astral planes, mm. and with the idea of creating this situation here so it goes perfectly down into the physical and it becomes the reality. And so we go there and we blow up all the demons, we kill all the demons, we destroy all the infrastructure and close the dimension. And then we go to its boss and then we go to its boss. Mm. Now, when we, find, when we go to the boss dimensions, what we find is human souls used as batteries. Now, you have the 3D physical body, you mm. have the 4D spirit, which we talk about, which breaks up, which is... Um, which which can be used as payment or it can be fixed. And healing is about fixing it so it runs the way it was designed to run. And then you have the 5D soul, which is the higher dimensional insertion down to here. It's like a link in the chain mm. down to our yeah. physical, right? But that one, they can't touch. Right. Like, you know, like the idea that the astral planes are full of evil is because they can exist on 4D, they can't exist on 5D. So they can't, they can't get into the human soul. However, what they do do is that they create a reality of perfect fear all the way around them, completely around them, so that they, um, so that they cannot see, feel, touch, taste, or know anything except fear. Every interaction that soul has outside of itself is driven by fear. And what they do is they use it as a capsule around that soul and, it, and then all of the energy of that soul just gets turned into fear, which is the fuel that powers that thing. So the more senior demons have a bank of captured souls that they use like batteries. Hang on a minute. I thought you said they can't get to the soul, but you said they wrap it. Uh, they can't get into the soul, but they wrap it in fear. Yeah. 
just like just like um you know it's a membrane and everything that they are in contact with the only thing they're in contact with is fear or things that scare them okay so, so, the, so so are you talking about here the celebrity or whoever is the the person that um sacrifices the child and creates that connection with the demonic world he has lost his soul by doing that right because they the exchanges they've taken okay and this this is this this is why I like these technical issues i prefer to talk with to, to astral projectors right <laughs> okay all right so once you get in contact with the senior demon and you make a deal with a demon and you know christianity says never make a deal with a devil like that's how christianity deals with treats it mm -hmm. and in aladdin's lamp it probably took 10 wizards a month to get that demon into the lamp to capture him and to get him out of their lives and then they buried the lamp right mm -hmm. but aladdin he Shined it up, the genie came out. Now, the Aladdin's lamp story is you can make a deal with the devil, but it just might blow up in your face. You'll get what you want, but it might blow yeah. up in your face. Whereas the Christians say never make any deals with the devil. Right. So it's just different attitudes that they have. Now, in Aladdin, in Aladdin's story, mm -hmm. like it stops at the end of the story, but the relationship between that genie and Aladdin does not stop because mm -hmm. what that what that genie wants is his soul. It wants it wants to cover, it wants to scare Aladdin over mm. and over again, so that it creates a capsule of fear. Now, the higher dimensional energy that goes into the soul it emanates out and it gets converted into fear because it all gets as soon as it touches its, its environment, it gets scared. It, it is fear, mm. and it, then all of that energy gets siphoned off. In, in, for the demon's use and that will and go so on they, forever for that person who sacrificed well, until the until yeah. a crew like ours shows up and mm. kills the major demon and rescues all of those souls and puts them into rehabilitation oh right yeah so uh, it's a standard feature uh, once it once there's a certain level of seniority in demon kind can you can you try working on tony blair and people like that <laughs> you know, like this, we yeah. have yeah we have really um yeah of course we have like uh you know we had a we had a list of 33 people most involved in the great reset who were pushing the great reset the hardest mm -hmm. and they were all in dark covenants they'd all gone through the eyes wide shut marina abramovich program yeah you can tell i mean i reckon someone like tony blair probably started off quite normal but then he got he started doing seances and rituals and stuff and then you can see he's got that you know, like trying to hold the evil in, like um, like in those movies where they're kind of evil on the inside, but trying to put on a good face. He's got that kind of Dr. Zeus He's smile. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's because, like, we don't think there's very much human left in those guys. No. We think they're more evil than anything else. So they're, they're examples of people that have done these rituals. They've given their soul away or it's in, encapsulated. It's been taken, you know, and, and wrapped in, you know, in a membrane. Stuff like that. Alive, yeah. And so they are, until they get healed by people like yourselves, they are constantly indebted to that demonic entity, even in future lives. So they'll well, they, yeah. yeah, forever, forever, forever. You know, well, you know, he probably made the deal that I get to be king of England or prime minister of England right. or whatever that is. Cost you know, like, and um, you know, but it'll cost him forever. Like, it's just a, he's an idiot. Not, he's an idiot. <laughs> Why would you do that? You know, millions of lifetimes or just to have like 15 minutes of fame is just not worth it, is it? Uh, yeah, well, because these are unbalanced human beings. Yeah. And they're, and the environments and the people around them don't allow them to do anything else, you know. And, oh. and I can't tell you how many clients I have who've been in contact with these groups yeah. who, just, who are just begging me to be reprogrammed to try and run away and to get that de demonic uh, touch or that demonic the, be the beginnings of that demonic downward spiral out of them okay so they actually want you to help them then some of these people well look not 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 necessarily the the duke of this or the baron of that mm -hmm. but the people who are in contact with them the people who get invited to their to their chalets and the people yeah. who get invited to business with them etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm -hmm. Right, but for, for for like your Tony Blairs and people like that, they their intention is to 
do they get instructed? They've made their choice. choice. Made their do choice. they keep for the rest of their life being told they have to do more and more for the demonic realm? They there's no escape for them. They yeah. don't know how to get out. But what do they have to do? Like, what's their? Do they have more of a task list they have to perform? Oh, look, Henry Kissinger. He mm. was. Um, he up until he he's still trying to make the world an uglier place. He's still got his finger in the pie. He's dead. For, yeah, he's dead now. But yeah, I he. Do you know who trained Klaus Schwab? Henry Is Kissinger. Just- Really, yeah. Henry Makes sense. Kissinger. Yeah. What, he was a protege of Henry Kissinger. Like, mm. there's more jobs to do in making the world a horrible place than, or sorry, not just a horrible place, but a place that is friendly to demon kind, that gives demons more access and more power. So, someone like like, like these world leaders, your Klauses, your Tony Blairs, you, you know, your Kissingers when he was alive, as they as they've done the ritual and they've got what they wanted, like the the getting up, uh, propelled uh, into the top positions of power, etc. Would they then, in the you know the next few months, would they be told to do more would, things? Yeah. Would they kind of yeah? Would they be instructed to perform more rituals or more, um, like yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Like you know, if you want if you want to control a planet, you need a technological edge over the locals, and the technological edge that these guys are using is black magic. Mm. Yeah. And what happens to those children on on the altar? You said that, that when they die, like the in the I think you said the the astral body the just, spirit breaks up. Like what happens and, to them? Is that are they are they just gone like disintegrated or do they have any kind of future? That's a good question. Like no, they well, their four D spirit is consumed but their 5d soul i'm not i sorry i haven't actually astral projected over to one of those rituals yet right okay um yeah but whether the soul escapes or is captured i am not sure right okay is there another word yeah i don't want to be i don't want to be in the room with 50 of their dark priests no i know it's a lot to take on isn't it it's a lot to take on i'm I'm not i'm not i'm not game yet (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like is there another word for soul like that would make sense is it your innocence is it your um free spiritedness is it your personality your like... five dimensional self like your 3d body we're all familiar with your yeah. 4d spirit is uh, is one thing your 5d soul is another part of it. but what is that though like how would you describe soul like to, to in without using that like word said, we don't have vocab for a lot of no. those concepts but is it like a personality? Is it an identity? Is it is it? It like has a, a it has a personality, and right. it, and it flies around Earth, and it flies around the galaxy, doing all sorts of crazy things. Okay. Right, and it has all sorts of curiosities that it's trying to satisfy through incarnation. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. So when you say a soulful person, this this that what what you're feeling in your own body is probably what's going on on that dimension like flying around galaxies well um well no it's it's here now it's here like you know and i think um it it it, it what do you call it? it does its admin and its uh, maintenance in the dream state or it, during part of your sleep cycle right um it looks after what's going it's like uh, it's like it's playing a video game or a simulation and it, uh, it's do, and it's you know it has to go and eat and shower and and go to the toilet, um, as most troglodyte video game players do. Mm. Um, and I think it does it does that maintenance while it sleeps, but otherwise it's completely immersed in this game that we're in. Yeah, through this body. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um... Would you say ultimately on the highest level, everything's just playing out as it should? I think that that's one of, I think it's a lie. So I think that that's a, a philosophical get out of jail free card. Right. That, pers- that person is being eaten by a crocodile. Should we go save them? No, everything's as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you know, it's pop out, isn't it? Something terrible happened. No, this was meant to be. You know? <laughs> All right, fair uh, it's, it's nonsense. And the other one is, you know, that pacifism turn the other cheek philosophy. Yeah. I, that's just nonsense. You know, yeah. like, if you have enemies, crush them. Like, I was, I was going to say then, is is there a god, and what is it? What is it like? How do you describe that? <laughs> <laughs> I I'm not going to I'm not going to wade into that debate. All right. Uh, I, is there a creator? Not, is is there a creator of everything or not? Well, something created all of this. Yeah. Yeah. Is it extra dimensional? I couldn't imagine anything powerful enough to create it other than this. I'm not sure that he is interfering in this free will zone. Right. We're given free will mm -hmm. in order to make mistakes. And that free will zone is being exploited mm -hmm. by a faction of demons or a faction of bad guys who, because this, because God's not interfering here, they also get have room to play. Right. If God was present here, they wouldn't be. So what's Jesus Christ then? Does that exist? And if so, in what kind of form? Oh, geez, you're not, you're not, like, well, I can say several things about Jesus. One is that he was a great wizard. So he's a real person then, in your eyes? Yeah, well, he's still flying around on the astral planes. We still bump into him. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah, it's the same with all of the religious figures. In fact, the, the I, in the old days, sorry, in order to be ordained a saint, in the old days, they used to um, used to have to perform two miracles to get on the to be eligible, and then they'd wait sixty or eighty years, and then all the bishops would fly around and see if they could find this or that guy on the astral plane. Right mm. <clears throat> now, why would they wait that amount of time? Because if he's really a saint, then he's healed himself. All of his problems are solved. He doesn't leak energy any, anywhere. He doesn't like fall into jealousy or anger or despair mm. or what have you, right? And leak energy in that way. And if he's flying, if his spirit's flying around for 60 or 80 years, it would have leaked to exhaustion. Mm. But because he's still coherent and still flying around, that means that he is a complete being and he is a saint. And it's no different from the Buddhist bodhisattvas. Those guys have got the same qualities. So does that mean that you can, you can connect with him, you know, through intention? They're called ascended masters. Yeah. Yeah, you can. And that's part of my class. If you want to meet Jesus, great. We'll go fly over and meet him. If you want to meet Buddha, great. We'll go do that. Mm. And, on, on down, and on and on through the lists of ascended masters, guys who've made it. And... <clears throat> One of the other great lies about um, about what it takes to be holy or spiritual, you know, like if you wanted to be Quan Yin, who is kind and caring and um, quiet and passive, like Quan Yin grew up in um, in a temple and spent her whole life in a temple. Who's this? Sorry? She did with Quan, Quan Yin. Quan Yin. She's an ascent. Q U. A N Y dash Y I N. She's a Chinese ascended master. What? Well, yeah. And one of the most highest achieving beings in in human history that we know about. Yeah. Guan Yin. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. But you know, she was a hot house flower. She'd never she'd never done any heavy lifting. She never put ham in a nail. She was uh, you know she was a very gentle and calm and soft person, right? Mm. But she never did anything. And if you contrast her with someone like St. Bernard, now St. Bernard, he did snow patrol. He bred those enormous dogs that we call St. Bernard's. And he also brewed brandy so that he would, you know, like every year, he lived on the northern side of the mountains between Italy and Germany, right? Mm -hmm. And every year the snows would come and people would get trapped on the mountain, on the road through the mountains. Yeah. And he was the guy who learned how to go get them. He had these big dogs, and you know they have the barrel of brandy around yeah. there. You drink brandy, you get this burst of energy, and you run down the hill, right? Mm. Right. Like he's a he's a badass. Like he was a you know, <laughs> like in order to in order to feed dogs like that, you have to kill an animal every day. 
Mm -hmm. Right. In order to like in order so he must have been a great hunter, a great outdoorsman, an exceptional mm -hmm. outdoorsman. Right. But the guy like a guy like that, a bear grills of the 14th century or something. Right. right? Okay. Yeah. Now, but he is also an ascended master. His spirit is complete. He did his prayer time, but he was never inside. He didn't spend any time. He wasn't passive. Right? He wasn't mm -hmm. gentle. He would go out and he'd kill an animal to feed his dogs every single day. He'd put himself at personal risk to go and pull people out of the snow every day. And mm -hmm. what did he do during the summer? He brewed epic amounts of grog. Like, this mm -hmm. is not... And my point is there is more than one path to spirituality. And people who cling to that passive, soft, gentle, I always must do the most caring thing, those guys, I generally believe, are faking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, kind of the fake New Age scene where they kind of hold hands and sing Kumbaya, and you know, you're spiritual if you if you're a vegan and all this sort of stuff. You know, it's just that's nonsense. Yeah, yeah like yeah, Luke. I I hope they find the way out their their way out of that philosophical trap. I genuinely do. Yeah, it's a trap. It's a trap. But just quickly going back, so um, so Jesus does ex was a person. He does exist as an ascended master in the five D. And is he actually what is he is he helping us? Is he doing anything, or is he yeah, just flying around? If you bring him a problem, he'll give you a solution. Okay, so you can actually send out uh, problems that you have to him, and he can respond to you. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you should breath. you should endeavor yeah. you should endeavor to meet him while you're doing your nighttime flights. I'll I'll, I'll try in a lucid dream. Yeah, give him a call. Yeah, I'll give him a call. Yeah, uh, I think I did actually um, set the intention to meet him uh, in a lucid dream. Can't remember what happened. I'll have to check my my dream diary on that one. But um, yeah. <laughs> I've got a renewed sense of um, expectation with it. <laughs> you know, now now that you've told me the significance of it, which is good. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. And everybody can astral project, but if you come and do my course, yeah. then I'll show you how to do it well. Right? It's one thing to get to the astral planes, but what do you do when you get there? And that's what I'll show you. Don't reinvent the wheel. Like I'll show yeah. you step by step what what's going on there, what problems it's worth solving, how to solve them, what the procedures are to, to achieve this, this, and this, how to how to look through your past lives, how to look through right. your DNA. How to meet all of these different characters? How to yeah, all of it. You wouldn't send them straight in the deep end of doing any undertaking some big, you know, task with with in the demonic realm. Then. No, no, we we definitely don't do that. Yeah, I was going like, to say it's just uh, you know, <laughs> well, because they don't know how to defend themselves. They probably leak, and they're probably quite vulnerable to these bad guys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, back to the quick fire. <laughs> just, just rattle these off. Um, well, okay. we're ranging over a lot of ground, but yeah, keep it coming. We're covering a lot of ground. I appreciate it, by the way. Um, the Miami alien story is there anything in that, or do you think that was just fake distraction? I think they were just trying to work, trying to create a distraction to the Epstein client list release. Yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. I, I, that's what I, I think. I mean, yeah um absolutely absolutely well look you know i don't know like half of hollywood's got to go down there and half of politics has got to be arrested now for having anything mm -hmm. to do with jeffrey epstein and that's just the first layer we don't know who yeah. they're going to give up in order to save their own skin and that's that's mm -hmm. where it gets in interesting because i think the whole lot of them are involved yeah i can't think there's many politicians out there that are not involved somehow it's a bit like you know the movie They Live with Roddy Piper. I don't know if you've seen yeah, it. No, that's a documentary. Yeah, it's a documentary. A documentary. It's like that. It's like that. Right. But, you know, I'm sure on some level they you might get the odd one. You see, and, like the odd human the whole, in there. And the whole of planet, you know, whole of planet Earth is starting to see through their illusion. Yeah. Right? Everybody who's paying attention is seeing through it now. And, you know, and the great health crisis of 2020, where mm. they wanted to feed us all poison. And I said, right? fuck you. <laughs> that's the moment where we realize they're not, yeah, no, that's the moment where we realize they're not here to help us. Mm. In fact, quite the opposite. Yeah. And I think that woke up a lot of the moderates as well. 
that event. So they fucked up. They bodged. It was a bodge job because um, they just they tried to depopulate us and they end up waking up half the planet. So, um, yeah. Well, you know, the pushback has been huge. Yeah. Like, you know, in the old days, everybody would do what they were told. But for the Epstein client list to be released is huge. Like, these yeah. guys have been protecting each other for the longest time. Mm. Like, there is a, there's a school of dark magic called uh, Freemasonry. Yeah. And when you get the 33 levels in Freemasonry and in the 20th level, you make a vow to cover up the crimes of your fellow Masons. Oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So they actively recruit in policing and judicial roles. Why like, these guys have been covering up for each other forever. Forever. Yeah. And I've heard that the, like, let's say the Freemasons, the CIA, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call it, on some level, they all connect the Catholic Church. You know, they're on that top echelon of power. They're all Satanists, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Then this, absolutely. That's yeah. that's my that's my two cents on the topic. Yeah, I think that as well. Um, okay, uh, nearly done. <laughs> but, you know, our, our teams of astral predictors. Well, look, like I was saying before, if you want to have, if you want to rule a planet, then you need a technological edge over the local and what our team does is yeah. well and black magic is the is the um is the technology they've chosen to use mm. now as i was describing the human makes a sacrifice or the human makes a payment to a demon who then performs the role and what we've been doing for the last couple of years is taking that de those demons out We've been going out there and assassinating demons wholesale. And so, the, and eventually we'll reach a point where their black magic doesn't work because there is nobody on the other side of the veil. There's nobody in the 4D to meet them. There's nobody there to pay. There's nobody who can get them out of this. So you can actually do that. You can, you can, spend, you can spend your time with your, your astral travelers just wiping them all out then not just can it's what we've been doing for the last yeah. two years how many of them are there do you think that's a good question um billions at least billions but, you know we've been we've become very very easily yeah we're becoming very adept at knocking them out so when they talk about hell what are they referring to is that actually a play is that the 4d then they're referring to a neighborhood on the astral planes Right. And you can get stuck there, can you? Well, yeah, I, I another we in tech, in for astral projectors we call it the underworld and you can get stuck in the underworld and it took me a couple of years to figure out how to get out of it. But um now they've got nothing there's absolutely nothing that they they don't have any weaponry any tools or any um techniques that all that all break you. So that's that's the last one that they use. There's nothing strong. They don't have anything stronger than that. Uh, and then, is this a place that you people can go to after they die, or not? Yeah. Well, look, you know, if people, uh, what's the word? If people, so I have to be a good boy, is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, well, they've trained us. They've mm. trained us to teach ourselves to think I'm going to hell. And there are guys out there who go, yeah, of all the stuff I've done, I'm going to hell for sure. And then when they die, their spirit goes, where am I going? I'm going to hell. That's right. Kill them. right. And they end up in that bad neighborhood. They're in. And what, what is this neighborhood like? Is it like full of people torturing each other or like what? It, yeah, yeah. Like I don't need to explain hell to you. There's been hundreds of descriptions of it. Okay. Um, no, it, is every, it is everything they say. Okay. And there's no way out of there? Or well, there is. There is a way out of there, but not many people make it. But it's because I'm a very competent astral projector that I understood what happened and got my way out. So you went in there. You actually decided to go into the hell world. I didn't decide. I was dragged there. But oh, anyway, it's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. Yeah, no, like, this is what I'm saying. It's dangerous. Yeah.
Oh, that is very dangerous. I wouldn't want to get stuck in eternal hell for it. You know what I mean, that's not something. Oh. We're like like we're playing for sheep stations here. Right, this is this is not for the faint of heart, mm. and this is a very genuine risk for people. But you know, like there is nothing else that needs to be done on this planet. There is nothing more pressing that needs to be done. So the risk is worth it. And heaven is the five D, is it? Yeah, probably. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, it could just be another neighbourhood, you know. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, there's a lot more written about hell than there is about hell. Yeah, that's I know, sure. yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is worrying. Um, okay, let's start to wrap up then. Um, I know you've been mentioning your course a lot. Do you want to just uh, tell the audience more about that, the process, um, how many people and what you take them through, and let's give it a bit of a push? Okay, so each week we do a two-hour class. We, I do an explanation, we do a control practice, and we do a free practice. Mm. And then during the week, you go and do that meditation style and you come back and, you know, and then I'm there next week to ask questions, to uh, to say, this worked, this didn't work, I like this, I didn't like that, what does that mean, blah, blah, blah. blah. Mm. Now, you know, I used, I did a lot of week, sorry. Now, I, I did a lot of weekend courses and I was a bit dismayed that I didn't have a way to ask questions. There was no format for me to come back to people and go, yeah, what did this mean? But I would have done about 50 of those. And what and what I teach now is everything that was in those. All of the very best stuff that I studied over, over those over that time, it's all in the course. And I have the most comprehensive course you could imagine. This is what I wish someone had shown me right from the very beginning. And step by step, I take you right from zero to the tippity top of the game. And a lot of my a lot of my graduate students are now flying missions with us on the astral plane and doing this sort of work. And it's safe. You can't get stuck in any and, bad neighborhoods, right? Well, look, and the beauty of having teams is if there's something goes wrong, then you've got you can call somebody up to come and get you out <laughs> to get you out of the trouble. Mm. And you know, but we've got it. We've got it pretty tight these days. We don't. We don't lose any fights. Yeah, the white magic yeah, is much stronger. It is a skill set. Mm. It's mm. life versus death. You know which one is stronger. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. No good stuff. Really. Really. Yeah. As I said, you know, I've gone through nearly every single one of your videos now, and. I'm absolutely, you know, hooked. I just love it. I just think it's it's gripping, gripping stuff. You know, yeah. are and, you um, learning something? Are you learning something? Well, yeah. I mean, and it's also reinforcing a lot of the stuff that I kind of already sort of started to sort of think about anyway. Yeah, good. And it was very reassuring to sort of um, yeah. watch and listen to it. Like I was saying to you in the comments that, like, I had this feeling that if there was an entity or some kind of consciousness ruling over the planet. It felt like there was a there was a change of the changing of the guard around 2020, and it felt like it 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 went into a consciousness which is a lot more ant like. You know what? Everything's a lot more, you know, like six feet apart and oh. like that kind of vibe to it. It, it yeah, felt like yeah. it was a lot more, um, yeah, just regimented. And I don't then, know. And then I did that, and I and you just saw my videos about the insectoid species. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know. You'll love it. You'll love it. The reptilians knew, knew they were going to lose the planet, so they sold it. It's just like a car that's going to blow up. They sold it before it blew up. And really? So they sold it to this uh, insectoid, and you could feel it. Yeah, I can feel that. But hang on a minute. So could could a, a, like a, a a benign, a benevolent um, entity come in and 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 take the contract of the Earth then? Well, that's my that's what we're trying to figure out. Are the Pleiadians actually our friends or not? Right. Because I think they're talking a load of hogwash. Like, you know, we're gonna give you med beds next year. No, no, sorry, in June. I mean I mean October. Oh sorry, the year after that. Like they're just it's just like a carrot in front of a donkey. They're just just dragging this around. Hang on, these are not right. these are not demons, right? We're these are the about, good guys. These are the these good guys, but what, the what are guys. they though? They're not they're not people in the 4D, are they? 
Well, I think they're humans who are just trying to capture a planet and all of its resources and all of its slaves. Okay. But where where do they exist? Are they in like oh, a different look, dimension, uh, or where 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 do they? They're exist? on another planet. Yeah, well, they mm. they're three D, but their technology is miles ahead of us. Right. And like they're children, as children, they're taught how to astral project, so we can astrally project and go and visit them and check out what they're doing. But I look, I have lost faith right. in our in our extraterrestrial allies. Okay, so there's not many good guys out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, look, I don't, I'm not sure if Earth has any friends. Mm. But here's the here's the thing that I should probably finish on. Mm. Earth independence is not something that anybody can give to us. We have to take it back. We have to active actively mm. take it. You can't like just like a kid, a seventeen year old kid who's leaving home. Nobody can give them their independence. Yeah, they can boot them out the door on their own, and yeah. they can figure out independence. Yeah. And I feel like we're at that stage where we're waiting for somebody to, to take care of us, but it's called our independence. Yeah, exactly. And if we're dumb enough, if we're yeah. dumb enough, we're going to let some other alien species who's a little more benign than the reptilians mm. do that to us. It'll be a soft takeover. Mm. If we're dumb enough to let that happen. But, you know, our teens are breaking a lot of old structures and the lie and I... Mm. And like, there's plenty of evidence to suggest that the Pleiadians are lying to us. Plenty. Can't you get in there and, and look after us? <laughs> well, I, there's only so many of us who are competent. And mm. priority number one is to kill demon kind and get rid of the cabal and to di disempower the cabal so they can be arrested. Mm. And well, how we treat them after that is really not in my pay grade. You know, what we do with them <laughs> after that is not up to me. Mm. Yeah. But uh I then we but then we have a whole other string of dilemmas. And I did two videos, dilemma number one and dilemma number two. Mm. What are we gonna do once we like what are the problems we're gonna face once Earth is independent? And their dilemmas, we don't have a response, we don't have an answer for that. Like the first problems that humankind faces, I don't know how to resolve them. Someone like, you know, if we had a thousand people like me, it'd be easy. But um, we don't. Mm. You know, so if if you and, and here's the thing, if you want to actively be part of humanity's revolution if you want to know what you can do come and do my training and do the thing how we're doing it so you know i have every expectation that we will form some kind of jedi council once this is once earth re regains its independence but you know we'll see mm. anyway come Brilliant. and join us it's the yeah. best game town and also follow follow your YouTube. Uh, that's just forward slash Alabar, Alabar John Jones two now. Is it got that right? Uh, uh, I got shadow banned a while ago, so I started Alabar Jones two. Go back to Alabar Jones one, and there's probably three or four thousand subscribers on it. Yeah. Yep. So uh, yeah, as you can All see, right. you know, like, for everyone watching this, just want to say thanks for watching. You can see how like interesting this subject is. Whether or not you believe it or not, it's up to you. But um, let's just have a conversation around it. It's like a, it's like blockbuster movie stuff that we're talking about here. It's really like gripping. So uh, at very least, you'll get a lot of entertainment. Oh, we're, we're living that out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we are. We're living out. We're, yeah, yeah, we are.